Corruption Part 1. Eddie Van Halen, he's everybody, if you don't know who he is, if you're a younger guy, or um, grew up maybe in a situation somewhere where you didn't have exposure to it, and now you have the internet, type in E-V-H, <laughs> Eddie Van Halen, very pioneering guitarist, electric guitar wizard, okay, so he kind of pioneered, I just watched a video this morning on it. And he claims he didn't invent the style. He was inspired by one of my favorite guitar players, Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin. He saw Jimmy Page doing his uh, heartbreaker thing, you know. The, uh, you know. He said he's holding his hand up in the air and he's doing this uh, move, you know, with the pull-offs like that. And then Eddie just thought that, you know, he, he can add a finger behind it and move the nut along with it which uh, nobody had really done that with it before. And if they did, it was just in a brief passing statement or a phrase within a solo. Eddie was the first one to pioneer that one technique and make it musical. And he did a really good job of it because I think every single person within at least two, two decades after he appeared doing that, everybody had to learn how to do it. It was like a prerequisite. If you couldn't tap, you sucked. <laughs> And I hate to say that, I was like with a bunch of blues people, mostly growing up, and uh, reggae and blues. So uh, it eluded me for a long time. Uh, I'm glad that some students has asked, has asked me for, you know, I'm sorry, I'm glad that some students have asked me to learn that over the years to show them how to do it. So I've taken the steps over and over quite a few times in my life to break it down and show other people how to learn it. Um, but now I'm practicing it myself. I'd like to be able to perform the song. And I'm starting with the tapping because someone else that I already know had asked me to learn the tapping part because they had already learned the other part. So I'm going to... Now, standard tune. This is important. If you type in Eddie Van Halen Eruption and you play the original version, their guitars are tuned to E flat. Every note is tuned to half step down on the guitar. All right. Now... To avoid that, having to retune your guitar, now, I suggest you learn how to retune it. That's number one. You'll be able to become a way better guitar player if you understand how to retune and you have the ear to hear a song and go, oh yeah, that's an E flat. But for this one song, because it's not incorporating many open strings, at least not in the beginning, you know, there might be some dive bombs in there and stuff. When we go to do the whole song, you're going to want to probably tune down to the actual tuning, which is E flat. Or we have an option. Now, because of the technology we have that was not available when I was younger learning, on, on YouTube, you can type in Eddie Van, you know, you can type in a Van Halen Eruption E standard or standard tuning. And someone's already used the computer to bring the recording up to standard tuning so that we don't have to retune our guitars to play along to it. That along with the pointer that we have to remember since we're all using YouTube now to help as, as a learning aid, remember that you can slow it down. When you're watching a video, now, don't slow mine down, any of them, because if you slow any of my videos down, you might, you might end on the floor laughing. I keep getting all these comments that say, man, when I slow your video down, you sound just like uh, Cheech and Chong or something, but <laughs> I don't want to get copyright claimed for Cheech and Chong now on top of everything else. Because if I play a song on here and it sounds too much like Jimmy Page or too much like Tony Iommi, the copyright claim my video. So I'm trying to play stuff in little pieces and uh, get around that until I can figure out how to appropriate proper royalties without them taking the complete lion's share of the video, which is not fair. Uh, and there has to be some value in the education of showing the material just because I'm using small pieces of it to show the education of it. I can see tipping the hat and paying back a few uh, shillings, you know, toss a few she seashells their direction, so to speak. But as far as them 
taking 99.9% .9 of the video because I used four notes of or five, six notes of a song and I put an hour of video out on how I'm all about the guitar and everything. I don't want to lose all that value. So until they come out with a better system, I'm going to be a little elusive on what I'm playing. Now some I'm going to make videos and throw to the wolves. You know, I'll go and do the whole eruption. I'm working on it now so I can try to do the whole thing all the way through for y'all and then put that out. And I know they'll copyright that, claim that immediately and then advertise on it and make all the money on it. And then that's okay. I'll just give, like I said, throw it to the wolves. But it'll be exposure for people to see that, oh, wow, you know, that teacher can do that or that dude knows what he's talking about. And then on the videos where I'm not showing offs per se or whatever, right? Maybe it'll carry a little more clout with you all that don't know me very well yet. Name is Wayne Sorbelli. If you haven't, please hit the subscribe button or at least the like button. Those are absolutely essential to any content creator like myself trying to post videos on YouTube. It has nothing to do with making the money because they make it almost impossible to make any money on here unless you make a full-time job out of it, which I have no intention of doing. But um, I just don't want them exploiting me. That doesn't ring a bell very well. Excited it doesn't set well. Huh? Funny, it rhymes with hell. But anyway, back to the topic. Okay. Um, I'm doing this all on the B string. My hand can stretch between the second and fifth fret, whether I use my pinky or third finger. I've been playing the guitar for many years. If you can't make that stretch, then you drop me a, a note in the comments and I will make another video playing it on instead of the B string, which involves starting down here where the frets are wider apart, further apart, right? I, we can, I, can just re, I can just transpose it to the fifth string, I mean the third string for you and bring it way up here where the frets are closer together. Um, just remember long strings ring out louder and push more air and smaller strings don't. So there's advantages to using the long open strings like Eddie did. I'm, uh, I'm not sure, I can't read his mind, I have no crystal ball. And um, so I, I don't really know, but I would imagine that he used the longest strings tapping when possible because they sound the best, literally, you know, they push the most air, it's a bigger string, a longer piece of string, it moves more air, so you have more presence. Now though, we can do it though, to start like he did on this second fret, because most people's hands will be able to do this. If your hand can't stretch this far, Maybe you want to start on a different song first. I put beginner intermediate for this lesson, right? Because that doesn't mean it's for ultimate beginners. It just means that this is on the beginning of the intermediate playing level. And some would very much argue it's way on the higher end of the intermediate and the beginning of the advanced level of playing. To me, the technique is easy. If you do something the same exact way correctly, correctly over and over just a few minutes a day you will do anything you want okay that's how your body is designed now you go like this okay well, maintain or just hold that second fret down i'm on the b string now my second string okay and i'm gonna push Here, here's here's what i'm saying in my head when i'm learning it right i go i go tap and my pull hammer and the hammer is going to be on the fifth fret. Now, this is all on my second string, everything I'm talking about. I'm just going to say numbers from here on out. It all means on my B string or on my second string. I'm hitting, and I'm going to hit it. You know, that's what a tap is. It's, it's, uh, it's the hammer. So I don't have to pick any note. Just by hammering that, I'm going to sound the note under my finger there. It's the same as if I fretted it and then picked the string. Except I'm applying the energy to the string to vibrate by tapping it. That's hence the, you know, word finger tapping. <laughs> Watch. That's one of three things I'm doing. It goes tap, pull. Now a pull is not a lift off. You don't just simply remove your finger. You don't just lift it off the fret, okay? You have to hammer. And it's like a flick. You're gonna, you know, it's like you kind of grab it with the meat of your finger. It's not just the, hear how that, when I take my finger off, I just lose the energy. You have to apply more energy by flicking it. I can't get close enough to really show. Let's see. See, flick. Meanwhile, 
my thumb is resting here, blocking out the sound of all of these other strings from ringing out. Six, five, four, three. Sorry, I'm in Key West, little tiny island in the middle of the ocean between Florida and Cuba. And so there's military jet scope. There's a ba There's several bases right here. They train all year because of our weather being cohesive to fighter pilots. Now there's the pool heater going on for my neighbor. <laughs> Bear with me, I appreciate y'all of you. Thank you very much for your patience. And uh, please like the channel. I hate to keep saying it, but I know personally, I watch YouTube videos all the time for everything from changing a light bulb in my car, headlight, to learning uh, a new technique on the guitar. For everything, right? I use it for reference. It may not be my main source for news, okay? But it certainly has its purposes. And I know when I'm watching videos, it's just like a library book, you know? I open it and I want to use the information quick. I'm not thinking that the author is relying nowadays on me to hit like and subscribe. That's the small payback since I'm using that information. So please, I ask if you would like to try to help our channel out. And uh, it kind of just really allows me to keep putting enough, side, enough time aside to keep doing this on here. Um, so if you find value in it, please support it for free just by hitting the like and subscribe button and if you drop a comment below that helps even more because then it pushes my video up in in the algorithm i think you know to be shown to other people like yourself with similar profiles and then the big big bomber the big big one is if you actually share the video with people that you know would watch it because it has value to them and then they like and subscribe i think i will be having um a nice large channel in the next few years if that happens and i would be very happy to use that as a you know a passing the torch as a retirement plan and i would thank all of you for helping me do that thank you in advance okay so now that's not going to stop anytime soon um so i'm just going to raise my voice a little i hope you can still hear me um, if not, I'll have to edit this part of the video out, I guess, or leave it in for the people that are just want to see what I'm doing. So the first, like about half of the tapping part, because Eruption, Eddie Van Halen, right? That's like one of the most famous tapping songs. I, no, 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 no. That's the most famous tapping song in the history ever of the world of tapping. And especially in the rock or, or Americana world. And, um... He uses, by the way, very, very light guitar strings, which really helps, turns the gain up and has some effects on, you know, on my amp, I have gain on it. I've got a little bit of chorus that widens the channel, you know, widens my sound, broadens my sound waves a little bit, if you will, kind of fills in some blanks there, some blank space, and um, a very small amount of repeat. And if you don't know how to put the, the repeat in time with the song, then just leave it off, just leave your delay off. Because it'll sound bad if you're playing in one tempo, and you don't have your tap tempo set to 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 right to the beat with it. If your tap is tapping back the note or the delay rather, you know, is, is delaying back a note in the wrong time, you're gonna sound like crap, or you're gonna sound out of time, which you really will be probably, as most of us humans are often, usually. Now. It's getting louder as the day, as the evening progresses here in magical Key West, Florida. So let me get on with this lesson. Firing up the pool, heater next door. I just hear my neighbor over here, he's about to shine it up, wax his Harley Davidson and go for a ride. So he just started that up. I heard him go around the block once already. And then I heard my other friends, they belong with the Sundowners. That's what we call, uh, that's the name of the local um, Air, Fo Air Force, uh, actually it's the Navy Air Force, right? And that's the, the squadron of the, what I consider, and I think many, most do, you know, the world's most elite fighter pilots in, on the planet. They train people, special force, forces from all over the world. They train the other trainers. That's how badass these guys are, okay? I mean, thank you for protecting us. Thank you for keeping our way of living alive in America. And I wanna go personally and say thank you everybody who has served, everybody that is serving, and everybody that has plans to serve. Thank you, God bless you. Thank you so much to give every person in this country a chance to live for free. You know, not, not, not for free money. We have to earn a living. Everybody must forage. 
you know, the bird that doesn't get the worm starves. That's easy, right? Okay. Y'all know what I'm talking about. If not, or if you know what I'm talking about and you think I'm wrong, some subscribe and get off my channel, okay? Really, that's how serious I take it. Sorry, but I, I don't need any negativity here. Okay, now, Eddie Van Halen, maybe the best guitar player in the world, okay? Especially at the time, or one of the most inventive, at least we could say, kind of like a Jimi Hendrix of his era, right? I'm going to tap on the nine, I'm going to pull off, and that pull off is going to bring me to the second fret here, watch. That's ringing my ninth fret. The flick or the, the pull off, right? Is sounding my second fret here, which is my C sharp. This is a G sharp. That's a C sharp. And then I'm hammering on an E note. That's my E fifth fret, B string. You can use my third finger. You can use your second finger if it's big enough. I mean, it just depends on how big your parts are and you know if uh, if you have smaller hands then it's no problem you just you just learn to do it with your pinky I, you know your first finger and pinky that's all right that's okay well, nobody's built the same and the best part about the guitar is anybody can play it don't ever let people say oh your hands are too small or oh, your hands are too big lies they don't know what they're talking about i will challenge anybody to come and tell me I want to see face to face. You show me why I can't show you how to play the guitar or ukulele. Remember Iz, God bless him. He did the Over the Rainbow song. He was a large man. He had a few health problems, okay? Kid, he was to me, he was a he was a, he was a young man. He was a, still a kid. He, each one of his fingers is the size of two or three of mine. You know, there's something about fingers though. They all come down to a fingertip. So not only is that one advantage that most people's fingertips are all about the same size, no matter how big, long, or girthy or fat the fingers are, okay? But the tips are very similar. And the way the guitar works, we can put, if I want to fret this fret, I can push anywhere behind that fret, you know, with a big giant finger if I had to, whatever, as long as I'm pushing the string down off of that metal wire, goal accomplished so even people with big fingers can play and if you don't have the strength to be pushing over here you know or your fingers aren't wide enough to stretch over. so if you have small fingers and you can't stretch you can play the same thing that's here you, five frets and up one five frets and up one the same notes keep repeating on the guitar don't ever let somebody tell you oh you're not your hands not built for it yeah. less some disabilities and uh, injuries accidents or something like that maimings deformities that take a place you know uh, whether it was born or um, something that you know you got a uh, hand cancer and had to lose half your hand I mean we can try and work with what we have to work with but I'm talking about uh, if you're starting with 10 digits this is all possible for anybody okay because there's a place for you to play on this fretboard no matter what your orientation is no matter what the size of your hand is okay so I just want to discredit all these non-believers out there or naysayers. That's negativity. Keep your glass half full. One day you'll wake up and just be full. If you keep it half empty, those people, they always end up tripping on the glass and it ends up totally empty at one point or the other. Now, back to the guitar, less philosophy, a little more music, uh, psychology. Now, on this, we're holding the second fret. You got this little pattern going on. Push or tap right flick hammer you get it you start to make a little sense now you think maybe you understand what's going on push flick hammer push flick hammer. that is so not hard oh my god now if, if i can't reach now that would be hard if i'm like eh, trying to stretch okay cool you can stretch for exercise to, to strengthen your hand and make you a better guitar player, right? But you can reach. There's nothing wrong with that, and especially in this song. Normally, you want to avoid all the adjacent strings because, God forbid, you don't want to push a string or bump one and fret it, you know, have it buzz out while you're trying to, to play. But for this song, since everything's on one string, 
I can push over here where the tip of my finger is barely touching that third string, but it's keeping it from ringing out. And it's, my first finger is not pushing down hard on the first string, so it's pushing that out. And now I got myself a, then I put my hand, this part of my hand here on these, the big fat strings, and that, that keeps those from ringing out. And before you know it, the only thing that's ringing is just that second string now. Now I'm in control, all right? As soon as this pilot, thank you for your service, sir. Now. Tap, flick, hammer, flat, flip, hammer. If you can't stretch, if your hand's not big enough, you can reach. Hold your hand this way, turn your hand sideways a little bit, and then look, that's just reaching. See, this is stretching, right? This is reaching. You might be able to reach a lot easier. Just hold that there, and then you might be able to reach it. Okay, watch. That's all I'm able to do with my second finger. I, there's no way I can stretch between those, well, almost, but ouch. I shouldn't have even tried to do that. But I can easily, not easily, but I can stretch between my first. I can reach, sorry, I can reach with my first two, watch. So number one is nine two five 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 nine two five. Get a pen and paper, or write it on your phone or something like that. Nine two five. Make I made myself a little post-it note cheat sheet. Yeah, I still use a pencil and paper. Okay. Ha ha ha. But uh, when the batteries, oh wait, the batteries don't die in that. That's right. You use it for free all the time. And then when you write it down, you actually remember it. To me, I still don't get memory from texting. It doesn't work. All right, right? It's the brain, different way. It's the way we were wired. Take advantage of all those years suffering in elementary school, learning how to read and write, man. You know, that was like living heck for a lot of people, Over, especially if you're a little smarter and it just came easy to you, and then you're sitting there like drooling, a, 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 and already I'm thinking like the zebra and the antelope went to the mall and got uh, the hell out of this class. <laughs> All right, I don't want to take myself back to those days. Sometimes I find horror in those memories. <laughs> All right. Um, nine, two, five, nine, two, five, nine, two, five. Tap, pull, hammer, tap, pull, hammer, tap, pull, hammer. And then the very next phrase, you know, he does that seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then he just moves his right hand back one, or I should say up, you know, up one to the eighth fret. I'm sorry, tenth fret. Okay. Now it's so it it, it was nine two five nine two five nine two five nine two five. Now it's ten two five ten two five ten two. This is how great this sounds. One two three four five six seven. One two three four five six seven eight. That one's eight. <laughs> Not hard to remember. Seven eight. Right. And then <laughs> I love this. One two. Now this hand stays here. This one moves up a whole step. For those that watch my other videos, you know that means two frets. Now same same technique. Six times here. Maintain this and two here. So you still have your two measures of four, right? You still have your eight. You still have your. I guess it's a uh, one measure of four. Everything in sixteenths, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let me show you the first two, th the first three moves tied together now. Okay. Nine, two, five, 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 nine, two, five. Ten, two, five, ten, two, five, ten, two, five, ten, two, five, eight times. And you move this hand up a whole step or two frets. Keep this here for the first six. By the way, I don't count six and then two. I count four because I count measures. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
And this hand. One, two, three, four. I'm sorry, this one. Okay, so we've got two, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That last one, so you, you know, you got two and five, nine to five, nine to five, nine to five, nine to five, seven times, then ten to five, ten to five, ten to five, eight times. And then you move your left hand up a whole step or two frets. And now I'm doing 10, 4, 7, 10, 4, 7, 10, 4, 7, 10, 4, 7, six times for a whole measure. And then the first half of the next measure, however, when you look at it, okay? Six times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. After that, this gets a little bit tricky because this hand moves up the whole step again but the pinky goes up one extra one now that's a space that's a lot because you, you might have to reach on that one even if you're a good stretcher okay if you're at a beginning intermediate stage don't hurt your hand trying to stretch take that kind of stuff in increments <laughs> you don't want to try to show off doing the split in front of your buddies after you drank some beers or something and then you know you rip your levi's jeans in half and uh split your hernia <laughs> and say goodbye to your uh you know um, all right, I'll change the subject quick. I don't know how to finish that without saying the wrong thing. Okay, so. Seven times. Okay, I'm just going to count seven. Okay, one, two, three. From this point, we're moving your tap finger up one to your 13, but we're moving this one, thank God, back one here to a more comfortable position. And we're gonna roll out six here and then seven, eight. So and then this moves up a whole step. Seven ten. Six times and then seven eight. And then up a whole step again to 9 and 12. So now you're doing 17, 9, 12. And he does that for, ooh, a total of... <laughs> 13 times, but I don't know if you want to count to 13. I like to count in measures, you know. So uh, you do what you have to do from the beginning. I understand it. Okay, you want to play it as fast as you can, as quickly as you can, not as fast as you can, but you want to learn to play it well as soon as possible. And then a lot of other things also, light will be shed on them as well. Okay, not always do you see it first in your mind and then you're able to play it. Very often, just like in yoga, you do the posture and then that is what lines the mind, aligns the mind and the energies, the position, the postures. Yeah, no matter of fact, you don't have to know why a lot of stuff works as long as it works, okay? Um, the stuff I'm showing you, there's a lot of information buried way deep inside of it. Angles of the fretboard, hand, fingertip to fretboard angles. It would be a, you know, 25 hour long video and most people would lose out over the statistics showing me you guys fizz out in about five minutes. <laughs> and then, although a lot of people re-hit the video over and over again, at different points of the video, which shows that you all come back and eventually watch it all. But I think it's funny that our attention span or the amount or how you guys are practicing, I shouldn't say it. What if you just get 10 minutes at work and you're there hitting my video for 10 minutes, then you have to go back to work. And so I, I, I can't judge how you all watch it on YouTube. Um, anyway, part one, let me just say it again. You can write it down if you want. It's 925, 925, 925, 925, 1025, 1025. Seven times for the 925, eight times for the 1025, and then six times on the 1047. And you just move this hand up two to the 12, and then it's 1247 just for two times. So that little phrase there then is one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. However you want to count it, right? As long as you're going to end up with the same amount of notes as I am, you're good. Now, after that part, let me do it from the beginning again so we can stay fluid. Now, that I would like to explain. The other ones, I guess, are, are self-explanatory. I'm just changing where I'm doing the notes. It's the same exact move every time, right? And you're on there for like four and then... Well, you're on there for six and then two, and then one time you're on eight, one time you're on seven. So it's it's easier to have a few seconds to think about moving to that next spot, right? But when you're on the ones over here, it's just you only get that one, two, three, four, you know, right in a row. 17, 12, 15, set, and all, everything's on the B string. Remember, all string two, everything on this lesson, okay? That's, I did this pur purposely like this. And then the left hand moves down one fret. So now it's 17, instead of, instead of 17, 11, 15, I'm sorry, 17, 12, 15, now it's 17, 11, 14, and then it goes down another one, you know, 17, 10, 13, and down yet another one, 17, 9, 12, and then again. And it's hella fast to try to get it back up there in time without having space between it, so practice it very Slowly. so that you don't become an expert at your own mistakes and you don't become an expert at sucking and if you do decide you want to suck don't tell anybody you watch my videos and definitely don't tell them you took lessons from me okay i'm being serious okay if you play too fast for your own good you're gonna suck that's why you'll suck you know that's why uncle bucky even though he knows seventy-five thousand chords my uncle bucky my imaginary one yeah he sucks because no one ever told him the right way to do these easy things. Now the poor guy practiced it. He became an expert at it. He's better at sucking than Elvis was at being good at being Elvis. What is wrong with that picture? Man, I hate that that happened. And I know it happened to a lot of people. If it's happening to you, get at me. We'll undo it. If it didn't happen to you yet, don't let it happen. Get at me and we won't let it happen. Watch. Nine, two, five. 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 Eight, moving up, right? Now, eight times over here. Ten, two, five. And move this up a whole step. Six times. Two there, then up a whole step, and then one extra one with the pinky for that one, remember? Eight times. Then we move each one back a fret, which is kind of easy to remember once you're in that... The hardest stretch spot, you're gonna be like, God, this sucks stretching that high. Okay, well, then it makes it easy to remember that you, after you play that for eight times, you get the hell out of it and you back yourself up one, okay? So, and over here, 13, this one goes from nine to eight. So then, now, instead of, you know, eight times. Now then, love the way that sounds. I mean, God. Five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now when you back up one, and when you spread these apart one, it's just six times, and then seven, eight. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now over here you back, now over here you move up a whole step again, which takes it from five, eight. Now we're, we're uh, seven, ten. Six, seven, eight. Six times on your 15, twice on your, on your 17. And then the same thing again, exactly. You move this up a whole step. And then we're going to do 13 times there. Or you can count to eight and then five. That's what I do. Because I looked up the sheet music at one point. I uh, can't remember. It's been a million years ago. But there's a measure here. And it goes, it's, it's called five eight. Because there's five beats in the measure. So I count my eight out. You know. Five eight. Um, one, two, three. And then you go into this decline, this two on each one. 17, 12, 15, 17, 12, 15. Twice. 
to move it down one. Sorry, I think I slipped over here a little bit. Like I said, um, I'm not claiming that I can get up on stage and play this note for note all the way through yet. I want to stress yet and pause for dramatic effect. I'm going to get this note for note and then I'm going to throw it to the wolves because I'm not going to pay for copyright. I'm just going to put it down and let them make their commercials on it, whatever. But then I'm hoping that in that video, people will see my effort, that I'm willing to learn what people are asking me for. You know, I wasn't planning on doing eruption. I was sunken into some kind of blues thing with a slide guitar, but somebody uh, made me a proposition on a private message about that they've got a wedding coming up and they've got a bunch of people that want this song done and they added on X amount of money if they could do it or bring someone that could do it. So, um, I told my, uh, the guy, well, of course I can teach you how to do it. I've taught a dozen or more people how to play Eruption over the years. I've been teaching for 25 years now. I mean, my God, a lot of people have asked me for that. I've never, though, sat there and worked on each part so I can tie it together fluidly yet. That's what my goal is now. I want to do it on record. You know, I want to play now and have my little errors in there as I'm teaching you all how I'm doing it. You know, I figured... God, the best lesson on it's gonna have to be when a guitar teacher is trying to learn it so that I know it enough to show somebody else. That's probably the number one lesson, right? I, I would think, and uh, no offense, I don't mean that against any other YouTubers. I love these other guys out there so much, putting out their time mostly for free to pass on a torch to everybody. I mean, and that's what I'm doing, man, here. You know, I get no money from any of this stuff at all. When I talk about the copyright claim, I mean, I just don't wanna get in trouble for using their stuff. Um, I'm not making any money on any of my YouTube stuff. Someday, I might if I, you know, stop working and just do this full time, which I'll never do because playing the guitar for people in person is just way too much fun. All right, I'm going to say this as I go one more time. I'm only going to call out the fret numbers because, and I'm not going to even say how, actually, I'll do it one time how many times, and you can write there how many times each one is, right? And then next to that, I'm going to do it again and I'm gonna play each phrase, all right? And then you can have exactly, like it'll say seven, that means seven times you're gonna do it, that means seven taps, right? And then next to that, it'll be written on the first one, nine, two, five. That means I'm going nine, nine, two, five, right? Nine, everything's on my second string. I'm using my, my thumb here to block everything out on the bottom. And I'm even using my finger over here. You probably can't see it on the video. I keep my pinky on the first finger or, or, my, or one of my other fingers because, uh, well, I don't want it to ring out by accident because then I'll sound like crap. <laughs> so here's the amount of time. Seven. Eight times. Six. Two. And then one. Eight. Six. Two. Six. Six. Um, no, actually on this one it's going to be the 13. Now from that point, you're sliding up from your 9 and 12, two frets, to your 12 and 15. Okay, so I'm tapping the 17, from here in 12 and 15. And each one of these is twice. And this is gonna stay on the 17 the whole time, but this one keeps moving down. And then again, twice you do it. Again. Twice will do it. And then this one moves into to your 15th fret, the tapper, but your hand, your left hand only moves up one. And actually, it's it's just twice on each, but it moves down again. See how that is? All right, that's a lot. That's a lot of material. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make such a long video here. I didn't even realize it. it's almost 40 minutes. Oh my God. All right, well, 
Um, thank you very much for anybody that's watched the whole video. I appreciate the guitar lesson with you, the guitar practice, the, uh, the time figuring it out. I hope I get blasted on a bunch of good comments on this one. You know, um, it's, it's fun to communicate with the community of like-minded plank spanking string bending eccentric mofos <laughs> i love you all thank you and one last time please don't get mad at me for saying it but like i said i forget all the time if someone doesn't say it please hit the subscribe button and the like button you can always just don't watch the videos but liking and subscribing and commenting and sharing makes a gigantic difference in how many videos or how many people rather that youtube will show this video to not show it to them but it, it'll scroll you know they'll have it they'll have a chance to see it if you all like it and subscribe to it and share it and comment each thing supports it in a, in a different way right uh, the community itself as it grows i appreciate you wayne sorbelli down here in key west florida Check out my channel if this is the only video you've ever seen by me. I have a lot of other content. I cover all styles of music on there. Uh, pretty much all styles, except for extreme stuff, really, at this point. But even then, I'll go for it someday. Um, and then I have a Led Zeppelin tribute band that works a few shows a year. We stick around the keys. I don't want to leave here, you know. Uh, so I just book at the Key West Theater and uh, some other places around. Um, and I have some pending contracts at the moment so i don't want to say anything until they go through um i uh, don't want to turn the other leads up on tribute bands from out of town onto my local um ideas you know we keep those for the islanders i love you guys thank you so much my friends appreciate it god bless you you have a great day thank you